Welcome to the first episode of Bob's Burning Questions podcast. My special guest today is Anna Eva Cotiza. Well, I really wanted to say a deep thank you to you to having me answer these questions. My name is Anna Eva Cotiza. I'm the head of content at Venture Out. My brief introduction of myself, I graduated from NYU. I, um, I'm creative, business-minded, and I've been working in film for about 10 years now, but I became business-minded and really interested in innovation um, midway through my education. And so in addition to studying filmmaking, I got really passionate, not only about filmmaking, but actually the principles behind it and storytelling. In uh, the middle of my education, there was a point where I began to study more virtual reality and um, that led me to transfer to NYU, where I helped build one of the first virtual reality museums. Um, and then also started to work on different film productions and start my own startup. Hope that my passion and life experience is in film, but my startup is not. So what persuaded me into going into, like out of all fields, electric motors, why? Good question. I was never interested in electric motors. I was never interested in electric cars. When I came to NYU, I really made an accidental turn to the uh, Tandem School of Engineering. And so I was going on a subway, I was super sick. Um, It's probably one of my first two weeks there. And I just remember like stumbling into the auditorium for the engineering school and wondering like, what the heck am I doing here? And through that school, I found out about a club known as IVS, Intervention uh, Society Club, which apparently glued together engineers and um, entrepreneurial minds at NYU. I think this is genius. And I had no idea what I was doing when I started to complain to various engineers about how much I hated the MTA and how it should be re-engineered, etc. One of the engineers that was there was this young man, Nader, who later on connected me and said, Hey, uh, we have this startup competition at our school. It's one of the biggest in the world called the 300K competition so he emailed me saying one day on a look i have this new electric motor idea um would you be my would you be open to co-founding it with me my best friend going up just for context was a was an inventor alexander and so my childhood was spent inventing um these cool crazy inventions for my own films um because i wanted to be a film director when i was when i was very young so uh nader this inventor he essentially told me that he had a new electric motor idea and i decided to say yes i will co-found this electric motor startup with you because it is a literal vehicle for me to learn about all of my interests as fast as possible. So um, it was a confluence of, you know, business development, entrepreneurship, innovation, and that set up a highway of learning that I never expected or intended to be on. It was actually one of the hardest things that I think I, I ever did. So what persuaded me to go into electric motors, um, a vehicle of learning. You can't learn by learning. I'm always under the, the, um, 
the implication that you learn by doing and you don't learn more about business or being in a startup than actually starting one for yourself and throwing yourself into it. Nader was head of technical development and then I was uh, head of business development and now CEO. Um, we've gone on to raise $160,000. Uh, Sura persuaded me the opportunity and just the fascination about the industry. Like I always loved electric cars and in the eyes in the media and Tesla being in, you know, eyes in the media. I mean, I suddenly was, I was very inspired at that time and still am by Elon Musk, by uh, Steve Jobs. And these are, these guys are like my, my heroes, my biggest mentors. And just that summer before I read Elon Musk's um, biography. And so here I am given this great electric motor, revolutionary electric motor um, idea that's 50%, you know, um, smaller, it's more efficient, it can give an exceptionally lar larger amount of range onto cars. And I thought, why not? You, you have to jump into this because honestly, you only live once. Um, and I just took the opportunity. We didn't, unfortunately, to end the story, we didn't make it to, to win in the final round. We did make it out of 700 um, competitors in the NYU 300K challenge. We made it to the final round, one of four teams. Non, we were the only non-PhD team. Um, and, and mind you, if someone comes up to you and they're a college student and says, hey, I have this grand idea, what really, what backing do you have of it? You're just a student. Well, Nader had his professor, Dr. Delion, who has 30 years experience in the motor industry, who, when he first heard of the idea, this is one of the top motor experts at NYU, he said he couldn't sleep for four nights straight until he finally realized that this was such a viable opportunity. So with the professor's um, approval of the idea, I just thought, like, of course, why not? You have to jump into it. That was a really long answer. I'm so sorry. So Anna knows a lot. At a very young age, she already had 10 years of film experience behind her. But what was she not prepared for? In my next question, Anna breaks down her biggest learning curves when doing a startup. What would I say is my biggest learning curve in my startup? There are two large learning curves in my startup. One is more technical and the other is more personal. The biggest learning curve in my startup is realizing just how important the process is towards customer discovery and understanding that your target market at the end of the day is not the one that is your first perceived target market. So for example, in our startup, there was this conception of, oh, like, you know, consumer um, corporations I'm sorry, consumer cars, car companies would want this motor more than anything. You know, why not Tesla? Why not um, uh, Volvo, Ford, etc.? All these com massive corporations who are trying to make uh, consumer electric cars, they'll want this motor. Well, after conducting 50 interviews, um, went to Berlin actually to do uh, to an electric motor conference just to conduct customer discovery interviews. Through that research, it was clear that that actually could not be our target market it would not be our initial target market it would not be possible and through customer discovery it was thus realized that actually small and medium-sized electric motorcycle companies in tandem with um uh the next generation vehicle that the military is working on those proved to be our two most viable initial target markets so the biggest learning curve is how to find your initial target market and customer and it's and it's honestly realizing how tedious and hard the process is and how it's ever changing as in your customer could be different one year from now and there is this urgency that has to be there to keep tabs on where your market is at all times and who your customer is who are you selling to that is the most important question that you have to be asking for yourself 
The second learning curve, I would say, is personal health, uh, mental health. So my second biggest learning curve in my startup is understanding burnout. This was the hardest part of my startup was that I, after two years of complete working multiple jobs at once, studying, plus raising money for this, understanding what is entrepreneurship, it got pretty hard. I stopped taking care of myself. I gained a lot of weight. I was severely depressed and there was this feeling of hopelessness, but I got through it. Anyone can get through it. I think some people have to just understand burnout and understand when you're taking on a little bit more than you can chew. A great solution to this is operating in sprints. So having target goals for every single week in a startup that the entire team can achieve. That was a great learning curve for me. Okay, so we understand her connection and drive to the electric motor startup. But what about Anna herself and her relation to film? Naturally, I wanted to know her thoughts on producing high quality content. Her answers coming up next. As a filmmaker, the secret to creating quality content is exceptional storytelling. Any individual can learn how to use softwares like you know, Adobe Premiere Pro, they can learn how to use a camera, they can learn how to upload content onto YouTube and on platforms, but if the principles of storytelling, um, even transmedia storytelling, are not applied, then then quality content can never be achieved. Stories grab attention, and in this world, attention is such a such a limited, highly valued currency. And stories grab that. When we were cavemen, hundreds, tens of thousands of years ago, the image of a fire with people around it come to my mind. Those people, what were they telling? They were telling stories. That speaking, that image of those people speaking, that hasn't changed to modern day. The difference between those cavemen talking about stories and the content that's being created in films nowadays is just, it's, it's just a different in content format. So if the format today can tell a story, that really goes a long way in how people can can tell great content. So that's my answer. Everyone has an inspiration. The reason we push ourselves and never let our human condition take precedent over our dreams. I want to know who's Anna's driving force was. Tune in and find out. Who is the inspiration in my startup community and why? Really good question. My inspiration in the startup community is my mother. She's not in an active startup community around her, but she started a business with my father. They're immigrants from Czech Republic. They escaped Soviet communism. They came to New York with, with really nothing. And coming from a background of divorcing a husband, having a child, then meeting my father who came to the United States as an opera singer. Uh, they they built a business uh, and they are still, my mother is still building small ideas that she has that is really inspiring. And that female figure in my life really made it clear to me at a very young age that nothing is impossible. Who else? I mean, Elon Musk, of course, he, there's a level of anything is possible in his mind. And for me, like the characteristics of, of who I am can be defined as, you know, creative, business minded, um, strategic, analytical uh, storyteller. I, and I love, and the thing is, is I love different industries, right? I love um, 
I love electric motors. I love virtual reality. I love storytelling, especially in filmmaking. The inspiration in that regard is Elon Musk because Elon Musk, he delves into so many different... His delving into so many different industries is really inspiring. It never came across as impossible for him to make both solar panels and ventilators for the COVID-19 crisis and cars it never or, and a software company for electronic payments and that is my my biggest inspiration because that i, I mean it's just, just amazing there you have a crew an audio interview with anna Avocotiza giving us valuable insights into what it means to be a part of the startup community Tune in next week to hear from a guy who lived in, out his Silicon Valley fairy tale. He left his job in New York, moved to San Francisco, and shared a house with his team. I can't wait to share it with you then. But until then, keep building.